views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. You are listening to Animal Soul Wisdom Radio, tapping into wisdom of our animals, angels, and masters with Darcy Pariso. Tune in monthly to learn how you can better understand your animals and deepen your relationship. This hit show calls attention to the many roles animals play in our lives. Through stories and insights, Darcy shares how animals assist us in raising our consciousness and fulfilling our soul's purpose. These busy healers help us with transitions and challenges love us and want us to have more joy in our lives. Are you ready to see yourself through your animal's eyes? Learn how they're helping you and walk through life with more ease and grace? Working with ancient healing practices, Darcy can guide you and provide inspiration to move forward. To learn more, go to DarcyPariso.com. Hi everyone, I'm Darcy Pariso and I'm the host of Animal Soul Wisdom on Transformation Talk Radio. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm here every second and fourth Thursday of the month. And so in addition to this day, I'm here um, the second Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. So remember to tune in. If you forget the times, just go to the Transformation Talk calendar or you can also go to my Facebook page and also check out the post. It's called Angels and Animals. So today, I'm really excited. We've got a very special show, and it's, um, according to what I've been hearing from the people I know, it's time for transformation. And who better to help us with that than Peggy Wilms? Peggy's here today, and she's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. So back to transformation and a better you. Um, Peggy is a life coach, and she's the host of Coach, Couch, and Coffee. Don't you love that name? I do. Coach, Coach, and Coffee. And I'm sure there's a story about it that she'll share. And so she's here on Transformation Talk Radio on Mondays at 3 Pacific and 6 Eastern. So I'm going to ask Peggy to talk a little bit about herself, but I'll fill in a few things here before we get started. Um, Peggy's been in the health and wellness industry for over 30 years. So you can imagine in that time, she's coached like thousands of clients. Um, to have healthy lifestyles, interactive, creative, and she uses some interactive and creative methods to really focus on who you are and what's going to work for you. So it's not a cookie cutter program. It's not a one size fits all at all. At all. So she, um, she really adapts it to what's going to work in your day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. Um, and she also has worked with lots of corporate wellness programs Peggy's vibrant. She's got limitless positive twists. And she says, and I know it to be true, that she'll keep you on your toes and coming back for more. Um, I've been talking with Peggy this week. And just even in this short time I've known her, which has only been like maybe two weeks, I am inspired. My office is a mess, I have to admit. (laughs) And I'm going to get motivated and um, start cleaning it up and looking at where I'm spending my time because as an entrepreneur, I find that my days just kind of slip by and my life's not so rounded. So Peggy's really brought that to my attention just by being herself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Coach Peggy will help you in all these areas. And she makes it really fun. After we talk, I just feel better. I feel, um, in addition to inspired, I feel calm and happy. And I just start looking at my life and what I can do better. Mm. And also as we're going along, I'm going to bring up things about our animals because they're always, you know, kind of reading us, seeing what's going on and looking at how they might help us. So there'll be some little inserts too about how they jump in and help us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my special guest, Coach Peggy. Peggy, it's a pleasure to have you on Animal Soul Wisdom. First of all, you're hired. That was beautiful. I couldn't have paid you better. That's so nice, everything that you said. Yeah, so I have been doing this for a really long time. I decided last few weeks, I think I'm going to just start saying for a long time. I think Dr. Phil keeps saying, I've been doing this for 45 years. I'm like, bud, let's just say a long time. So I've been going forever since I was really little. Um, My mom even jokes that when my siblings were young, I was just taking over their world and trying to better them. And I can't give you a start date of how long 
it really has been. I would have to say it's probably way before they labeled it life coaching or anything like that. So um, I am so excited to be here with you. And just as much as you've enhanced my world and my listeners and my clients that have been listening to you on my show, I hope that I can bring, you know, something to your listeners and, and add to that. So I've done lots of things, corporate wellness. What, one thing that I did decide really early is that I always wanted to eat well for some reason. And I always wanted to be physically active. So academically, um, you know, nutritionally, I, I just was very, very physical. And, uh, and I had a spiritual connection. And there was just something I knew for a fact that my passion and purpose was going to be in this lane. I had no idea why. But regardless of the children I raised in the motocross world, whether I was married or living in Germany, wherever I was, I found a connection to do this in some place. I renovated bank gyms and had a can where people donated dollars so I could teach aerobics. I mean, it's been around forever. Um, but I would just have to say that I, I believe it's also an industry I hid well in. So, you know, I was an under eater, not by choice. And so you focus on nutrition and others. You can hide a little bit without focusing on yourself. And when you help others be physically active, you can be active right along with them to the point of injuries, had three shoulder surgeries. And, you know, and then just trying to balance their life, I could focus on them and not so much myself. So as I've gotten older, I've really tried to walk the talk, do a better job. Well, it appears that you're doing a great job from everything. I mean, what a life. I think that's really incredible that you came in with that knowing and that you trusted it. It just also speaks to your intuition and, mm-hmm. and your connectedness to, you know, knowing yourself yeah. and, and what you need and what you're contributing. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So I wondered, um, because I had this question, I thought everyone else may too. Mm-hmm. So how do you start this? When people contact you, what can they expect? Do they um, like a whole program? Or are there just pieces that you pick out? Um, you said it's individualized, of course. Yes, I... <laughs> That's one of the things in the past that I collected along the way is that I realized really early on, we could all try a diet. We could all go to the gym. I'm a trainer, sports performance nutritionist, personal trainer, life coach. And I realized that they just kept coming back and coming back over a period of time. So I started to collect, you know, and then I went into the workforce and did corporate America. And I thought, you know, corporate wellness, maybe I can get them there. You know, that's where everybody works and they spend 70 hours a week. I'll get them there. I'll help them there. And then I kept thinking, I got to dive back somehow and get to the family. And then how am I going to get? So really what I realized, mostly in my last um, position that I was at and watching the biggest loser um, statistics and the extreme weight loss statistics, the majority of all of them, except a very, very small amount, have fallen off the wellness wagon again and gained their weight back. Mm -hmm. And so right on, I thought, I've got to get into everybody's real world. What is it like? Who do they live with? Organization, creativity, nutrition, exercise. So when someone contacts me, I do it a little bit differently. I come at them with a hardcore welcome packet, big, huge expectation list. And because I want to see their level of, you know, focus and really how serious they are. Are they a nine or a 10? Or do I have somebody who's a two or three as far as importance? And then I create, we meet on Zoom, just like this, so you can be wherever, no excuses, excuse proof you. And then I make sure that we're set up with goals that make sense in your world. So I might say, hey, Darcy, are you, you know, single or are there children or do you work 70 hours a week or do you drive and figure out what works for you and then dive back into your history? Because I want to know where you failed. I want to figure that out. I don't want you to keep coming back with the you know, tell me something new. I want to work on something new to design what works for you. And then I create a a personal private Facebook site between myself and the client or the groups that I do. And that way we can communicate in between sessions. So that's kind of the design. Oh, I love it. I really love that. So it sounds like it's, it can be baby steps. I mean, there are those that want to jump in that have been in Know, maybe running marathons or whatever, but but right. for a lot of other people that haven't gotten off the couch. <laughs> yes, yes, I would say that. One of the things that I've recognized as well is that people would start to come to me. They've almost got an executive summary and it's designed to tell me what they 
what they need. So I want to go on a diet and I want to lose 20 pounds and it's rather rehearsed. And I almost always just say, you have no idea what you're headed into. You might think it's to sign up for a 5k and accountability, but it's going to be way deeper than that. Family history, we go into all of that. But you know what, Darcy, the thing is, is that we weren't taught that baby steps matter and they matter immensely to take baby steps. Well, I know that for myself, if I've tried to jump into a whole program, I can do parts of it and then I feel like I'm failing in other parts and then I don't feel good about it or about myself. And that kind of sets me up for failure in the first place. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. That's one of the reasons why I look at a, you know, a tool that I put together with 14 dimensions of our lives so that we can see what, what needs to improve. Is it your organization? Is it your nutrition? And we dial it in so the wellness wheel is perfectly round and keeps rolling along. Yeah. You know what, Peggy, we've got a break coming up, but I think we should skip it. Let's keep going. If that's okay with you. Oh. Hey, I would love it. I mean, we're I'm just getting it. rolling here. I'm loving okay. it. Let's I'm keep going. going. Thank sure. you. Sure. So you were talking about that you've got a, a system that you set up. Is that the, the three pillars that you talk about? Sure. So what I did um, three years ago, I decided that um, my youngest son had a serious motorcycle injury. And so he was we, we literally had to take care of him physically and for four months, couldn't walk. We had to go through the rehab. And at that point in time, I decided if he's 21 years old and has to redesign his whole life, I am not going to be 80 and regret. I didn't do what I wanted to do. So I left corporate America. I moved from Denver, Colorado to Cape Coral, Florida. So I can look at the palm trees every day. And I said, I'm going to start a business based off what I know. I know the first pillar needs to be nutrition all have to eat well based on, you know, our likes and dislikes and what we need. I know we have to move. That's my second pillar is exercise based on what we can do. And number three is mindset. And in that mindset is the the glue, the tough part. So that's the habits and the, you know, emotions and behavior management and organization. And do you paint, but haven't paint for 20 years, let's stir that up. So all three pillars, if they stand strong, you get to your goal, whether it's gain weight, lose weight, or maintain. Yeah. So if somebody falls off, they can, they can get back on, right? If they say that, you know, I haven't been doing this, I haven't been doing that because it is individualized. They just take those baby steps to get back to where they were. And part of it is, is that they don't realize their own red flags. So we work a lot on what are individuals red flags. So I've had migraines my whole entire life. And I had two really bad car accidents back to back in 11, 012. My red flags are I work too much and I get neck pain. I stop eating and I don't go outside. I am off my wellness wagon. So those are the red flags that work for Peggy. And I would need to know for Darcy, what are your red flags so that we can recognize it? Because people will stop opening their mail for a month and not think it affects planning your food or moving. And it all is beautifully designed, really, if we figure it out for you. Yeah. I know, you know, I look at things, things that I want to do, and I realize that I lose track of time. I just get so into something that all of a sudden hours fly by, and I think I'm somebody that needs to set a timer so that I could be accountable. That's what we do, too, is sometimes people with alarms, I know when I was trying to recover from my food, which, again, wasn't intentional, I just, I always joke if I could have an IV stand and a catheter and never have to move from my desk, I would be so happy. I could just keep working. But (laughs) The the reality is, is some people do have to set an alarm that reminds them to eat, reminds them to get up, reminds them to do, you know, certain things. So in your case, that might, you know, be something like that. But, you know, again, um, accountability and motivation are huge. So I have clients I worked with 15 years ago that will come back and say, whoa, I just need to get back on track. You to kick my butt. Let's just get together for, you know, six weeks to, you know, two months, whatever. And we all need it. I have a coach. I have accountability team that I the call calls me out on it and it's tough. It, it's really tough. I think that's great because I mean you have yeah. to live it to really know to teach it. I, I believe you know you can't study something and and have a awareness of it. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you have to have all the highs and lows and all those situations happen to really get it. 
You know, and the other thing that I did is I realized, okay, I want to coach one-on-one and I want to go deep because I'm not a lateral girl. I'm not about churning clients and churning a bunch of money and then moving on. I want to go deep, get to know people and watch them spread and and be successful that way. So when I knew that, I knew there was going to be other products I needed. So I do group series, virtual series, 12 weeks, you know, eight week series with up to 12 women. And then I have wellness retreats here. I'm in Cape Coral where women come out here and I teach them how to we exercise together, we cook together, we do some mindset workshops. So I knew I would have to offer many different products to get to people in different ways. Mm, I like that. And that's, that's that um, yeah. in real world because people's yes. lifestyles have to vary. I mean, there's probably some that fall in the middle, but there's probably all different degrees and situations mm-hmm. and some are probably pretty fun, I imagine. <laughs> anyway. That's true. Oh, that's so true. I guess that leads me to my question. Um, do we basically come with the same core issues? Are there just variations of them or can they vary greatly? Do you have any stories about how maybe people are I've, different or how they've maybe absolutely or and got back up and stayed motivi- motivated? I would say sometimes, all the time, we come with our huge history. And that's, that's a, pro, a tool I put together. I call it family, health, and habits, wellness, where we'll go right back to four or five, six years old. And we, again, look at, exercise, mindset, nutrition, and social environment. And I'll say, did your gym teacher say something? Was your mom always on a diet? Did your grandma hide food? Um, Those types of things, because, you know, we are what we've seen and what we believe. And so when you say core values, integrity is obviously a piece of not being healthy. We all lie to ourselves more than we lie to anybody else. Tomorrow's a new day. I'm going to eat better. So I would say that everybody's a little bit different, but there is no cure to wellness. It does not have an end. Um, And I just try to figure out really what's going on in their real world. I mean, if somebody, I have a client actually, and I'll tell you the truth here. He drank, drank nine bottles of wine a week. This is the God's honest truth. And I just said to him, is there a possibility to get to seven? Is there a possibility to get to six? And that was, that was his literal real world. So we had to back it off. And of course, did he get healthier? Absolutely. But if he wasn't open and transparent with me, I, we would have just say not lost any weight and he could have kept lying to me and, and himself. Yeah, I bet that happens. I mean, not, yeah. not all the time, but I'm sure people just, you know, they hide the things that maybe they have some shame or embarrassment around. Right. Yeah. I would say self-confidence, um, personal, and you know, your, your, Image, self-image, even body dysmorphia, I would say self-love, self-care or something. It's a common thread regardless, male or female. I work with both. Um, is it, That's the toughest part we work on every time we get together, self-talk. Mm, I, I believe that because I think that I've seen in my own life and I've seen it in, oh, maybe children and friends that we can self-sabotage. You know, we mm-hmm. might not even realize we're doing it and we all have those old, it might be childhood things, like you said, or it could be um, a previous relationship. Anything can come up and just throw you off your track. And you start to doubt yourself and wonder if you can do it. And if your self-confidence is enough, it's... It feels like well, it's we have other people that sabotage us, even if they're not intentionally trying to do it. Because when you're home and you want to lose 30 pounds, it doesn't mean your mom does or your husband does. And mm-hmm. they unintentionally can try to get you off track too. So we have to work with that. Yeah. So is that what you're referring to when you talk about the roller coaster theory? My roller coaster of life. RCL, yeah. RCL. So to me, the roller coaster of life is a great symbol that we have our ups and we have our downs and we have our loop de loos And sometimes the ride stops, you know, it has a start, yeah. top start. Mm-hmm. And I just always say that, honestly, I say that we're not that special. We are not that special that something won't happen to us. We're going to lose a house, a dog, um, job. Somebody's going to get married when I have a baby. And so the roller coaster of life, what I say is that let's get ready, expect it, plan A and B, because crap happens. That's what I say. I say yeah. crap happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 Um, so I love this. I love this about the baby steps rather than trying to burn out in a marathon, because I think that's what a lot of people do. They, yeah. they get inspired. Hey, I'm going to go to the gym and, and they're there for a month, maybe longer, yes. <laughs> maybe. And then they don't get back and there's a big gap. I know that because That's I do right. that sometimes. Well, and I also work with habit approaches, right? So I'm sure 
people have heard of our Am I a Fresh Starter or a Baby Stepper. And fresh starters dive in and they're excited and they they burn out or get injured. And baby steppers sometimes get, you know, analysis paralysis and they don't get going. And I also work with love languages, Gary Chapman's work. I also work with Dr. Um, Michael Bruce's work with sleep, stu- you know, his sleep studies and chronotypes and learning styles. Because if you're audio or visual or kinesthetic, it depends on, you know, how you're going to absorb information and have it, you know, strategies and tools. So we work with all of that, all of that stuff. Mm. You know, I've looked at those things often too. In fact, I was just reading love languages, but learning style too. I mean, you can't tell somebody to do something one way and they can't even really process yeah. that or take it in. They might yeah. try, you know, but then they, again, yeah. have to fail. I wish that would be the first thing as kindergartners, we would be asked, mm-hmm. are you auditory, visual, or kinesthetic? Our learning abilities and what we would embed would change the world. I believe that from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. I, I have to... Th- I just have to throw an animal something in here. (laughs) Please. As we're talking, I'm thinking about how our animals help us. And it's in all kinds of ways. And often it's, they're so um, common or maybe small, seemingly small that we we miss them. And I was talking to a woman not so long ago and she said, you know, wait, wait, before we hang up, one last thing. She said, why is my cat always jumping on my desk every day? You know, he never used to do this. And now every day he's jumping on my desk, across my papers, on my keyboard. And, uh, you know, and she's like, it's really annoying. And the cat said, well, you asked me to help you to, um, to have, you know, to be, to work less and to be more rounded. Mm-hmm. And she had actually said that to her cat, but forgot. And we do that a lot. We, mm-hmm. we say things and it's just kind of in the middle of the work. Oh, I need to work less. You know, I need, I need to start being finished at six o'clock for dinner. So that's what the cat was doing. And even, you know, he had a sense of time also. So he would every day jump across, jump across. And she just laughed and kind of hit herself on the head and went, okay. So it's, it's just a simple, funny example, but they will help us. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, people talk often, even lots of authors will put things in books about dogs and we miss it because we might be busy whether it's cooking dinner or preparing something for our kids or working or whatever, and we're sitting at home and the, um, the dog's coming over to us and going to the door or bringing the leash even, and they want to go out for a walk. And we just think, oh, you know, later, later. But they're telling us that you need this as much as I do. But we don't think in those terms. We always think about they want something, I'll get back to you. And they're saying, I'm trying to help you. Hey, dude, you asked me to do this. Exactly. Can you put that out there. When you decide, and of course this, you know, let me know on the timing, but I have, whenever you want to chat about it, cat and dog stories with my clients virtually that you and I have chatted about that I'd love to share with the, you know, the listeners and viewers whenever you decide there's time maybe to the, in today's show. Yeah. But you know what? We, I think we've got time for one of them now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. So when Darcy and I were talking this week and getting to know each other, she was helping me try to understand geckos in my life. That's how we actually met. And so I had said, oh my gosh, these stories of these cats and dogs happen with my clients all the time. I said, I'll have 12 people up on my Zoom and then here comes a cat or the dogs will come up every time I teach a class. There's a dog or a cat or a parakeet or somebody who comes into the screen infamously. So tell them what you told me, Darcy, might be going on. They're there to support. Um, yeah. You know, the thing is, is they feel like I'm part of the family and I'm going to be helping in this. And yeah. often they might be talking about me. And so I'm, I'm part of the family and I want to be there. I want to hear. And whether it's about coaching for you, it's about um, maybe talking to the people or the animal directly. They always come in. And lots of times people will say, every time you say something, my cat's ear twitches. <laughs> <laughs> or they weren't in the room and suddenly they came and now they're walking all over me and they're listening and it's energy. As I'm thinking about them tuned into their energy, they feel that and they're like, Hey, and so in a way there's also almost a feeling of, um, of honoring you. You know, you're, you're here for me and you're going to talk to my human on my behalf. And I want to be here to make sure that, you know, everything that I want to say comes up. So it's relationship building too. Yeah. And I'll just add real quickly is it's always, you've made me be kind of aware of this. And when I look back, it's always at a time of almost a declaration. Boom. It's never like, let me out a barky thing, trying to interrupt. It's almost like, yeah, what she said, you know, they'll they'll (laughs) come around and kind of hang out. They're not trying to interrupt them or stop or disrupt. It's, it's interesting. And I'm going to pay more attention to that because it's, it's very interesting. 
Yeah, and it's also a show of support, even if it isn't particularly about them. It's like, I, you know, I'm part of the family. I'm here to support you. Mm-hmm. And I want to know what comes up so I can help you and know what I can do and how I can do it. And if we ask them, there's so many times where if we had just asked, we could have avoided, you know, maybe a, a veterinarian appointment, <laughs> a lot of sleepless nights. Really? Um, and I know because I'm so guilty of that. I have worried about my cat and my dogs. And like the next day or two days later, I calmed down and talked to them and they said, oh, I'm okay. I ate something bad or I was worried about something, but it's done. You're done with it. So I'm done with it. <laughs> so it often, yeah, it often comes back to us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but animals do help us to see ourselves. So if you are working with somebody and their dog is anxious or their cat is shy, you can not... Absolutely, but you can kind of make the assumption that there's something there with the person. Okay. Because that's a question that I often ask people. They'll say, um, you know, it's different if they're adopted and they just came into the family, but if they've been with the family for a while, okay, um, they're picking up our feelings, our emotions, how we view the world, how we are in the world. So if the cat is shy, you know, you might say, um, you know, whatever, talking, having the conversation, whatever's coming up, you know, is there a time where you feel like this? And maybe they come across as somebody that's, you know, gregarious and out there and, you know, like at the party, but there's a particular area or two where they just feel very shy and they don't want to speak up or maybe that particular group. And it's bringing up maybe something from their childhood or something from a past relationship, but it helps them to bring up, you know, their own stuff. That is so interesting. Yeah. So even a shy cat can do that or, you know, dogs causing havoc, ripping things up in the house or barking or chewing or, you know, whatever that might be, you know, you might look at um, what's going on in the house, you know, maybe the man's really stressed at work. And if you look into it, there's some commonality or there's something happening for a reason. I tell you, I mean, I use the dog thing all the time with my clients because there's so many studies that prove when we have a pet, we're more active, we're happier, we live longer. I mean, there's so many studies out there and I've seen it you know, lots of times. And so you had also said something about, you know, barking at the door and and greeting and how it's not an annoying dog. They have, they may have a a job. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that was such an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you to hold that thought because we are ready to take a break and we'll be back on Animal Soul Wisdom with Peggy Wilms. We'll see you soon. If you've ever had a broken heart, you know how painful that can be and how long it can sometimes take to heal it. I'm Megan Edge, author of The Heart's Journey, Healing Hearts, Oracle Cards, and Guidebook, published with Balboa Press and Hay House. In The Heart's Journey, I share with you my own heartbreak and how I healed it through the beautiful hearts that found me in nature. From taking photographs of these hearts for myself, I've created this beautiful toolkit, which includes the guidebook, which has my story, how to work with oracle cards as a healing tool, and the story of each of these hearts as they cross my path. I've also created a beautiful journal. There's a pen, a bookmark, and of course, the 42 Healing Hearts Oracle Cards. You can order the Hearts Journey Healing Hearts Oracle Cards and Guidebook through my website, meganedge.ca, through Balboa Press, Amazon, and many other places online or your local shops. I look forward to hearing about your heart's healing. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. What is holding you back from living the life you are meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at louparadise.com. Tune in. 
in to Knowledge Book Radio with host Marge Potasik each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Through many experiences, Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity in its transition to the Golden Age, and it provided the truth and the answers. She now shares information from the Knowledge Book with you each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit USA.TheKnowledgeBook.net. Are you feeling stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration? You might just be on the verge, on the verge of attracting your soulmate. Tune in each month to The Laura Richer Show, where dating coach Laura Richer and co-host matchmaker Peggy Bennett share tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. For more information, visit richerhealinghypnosis.com. Hi, everyone. This is Darcy Parisa. Welcome back to Animal Soul Wisdom. I'm here today with my very, very special guest, Peggy Wilms. And Peggy is the, she's a life coach and she is the um, host of a new show on Transformation Talk Radio. So it is Coach, Couch, and Coffee. Coach, Couch, and Coffee. Isn't that catchy? And it's every Monday at 3 Pacific and 6 Eastern. So I've been listening in and I just love it. And she's inspired me and I know that she'll inspire you too. Uh So we're going to jump back into our topics. We've been talking about um, how Peggy can help you. And she was telling me during the break of all the different clients she has, the ages and the situations and they're, um, it's just fascinating. It's just really fascinating. So I'm going to ask her to share those things with us in just a minute. But before we do, I wanted to mention, um, Peggy, you're offering a special today, right? I am. If if Carter or anybody wants to take first caller, if that works, if there's somebody calling in, I will give away a free 30-minute consult. Somebody can call me. We can Zoom, see each other's face. And they can um, either that or they can reach out to me at Coach Peggy at 3wellnesspillars.com. If I get a bunch, I'll just do a random draw. So whatever works for you, Darcy, I'll give away a session. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I was going to mention that I have a couple of animal communication classes coming up like really soon. <laughs> the first one is I'm in the Seattle area. So the first one is on Bainbridge Island, which is just a ferry across the Puget Sound. So Bainbridge Island. And it's on Sunday, the 31st from 10 to 5. And it's um, learning to communicate with animals. And we start with the basics. And we have a really nice um, gourmet organic lunch. And it's just a really fun um beautiful, peaceful yoga studio. And when you walk in, you'll just feel like real (laughs) Zen-like. So please come and join me. It's a lot of fun. And bring pictures of your animals because we practice with animals in your home and in spirit and we share them and it'll be a great day. And then there's another class the following Saturday, that's April 6th. And that's going to be in Snohomish County or Snohomish, Washington, here just north of Seattle. And we're going to be working with horses. So we'll be um, heart-to-heart communication, and then we will move out into the arena and start um, taking those messages and reading their energy and scanning their bodies and um, communicating in in all different ways. And that's a lot of fun, too. So keep those in mind. If you're interested, just go to my website, DarcyPariso.com, and go under the events tab. So thanks. Um, And we were talking about... Oh, sharing your stories. I think that I would rather hear your stories and I can chime in with some of my own. But for me, I've always been interested in life coaching and I've looked at packages of um, like you do this and this and this. And I like some parts of it, but maybe not all of it. Mm -hmm. Wanted to take those pieces or so what you're doing is really, really great. And I'd love to hear more about it, how how you put it into real day practice, like with people. Maybe if they're younger, they're older, they're overseas or or just whatever. Okay. I think, you know, one of the things that I don't have, didn't have a lot of fans out of the gate with is when I said, I'm not going to support a cookie cutter diet. Does it mean that if you come to me, you say, I want to start on the Mediterranean or a keto diet, or I've been doing this and it's successful. I will, however, make sure that it is molded for your real life and you will have long-term success. I don't believe in something that is very black and white, A or F, because anything that we try to get an A in long-term, we just don't have the ability for sustainability and resilience 
to do it forever. And we typically don't slide from an A and just hover at a C. We slide off right at an F. We stop eating well, we stop moving, we lay, we lay down, we stop calling mom. And so no matter what, when people come to me, I don't support a cookie cutter diet per se. And I don't go to a gym anymore and support, oh, it's CrossFit. CrossFit's the answer. If you're a CrossFit expert and you want to do that or you want to run a marathon, absolutely. But I force them to bring in all areas of their life because frankly, relationships suffer gravely when people hyper-focus on their nutrition or their exercise. So I've worked with young clients. I worked with over and under eaters in their teens and high schools. Um, Years ago, they have self-esteem issues, maybe lack of support at home, um, broken homes, relationship issues. So their wellness wheel looks way different than an adult's wellness wheel would look. Um, And they don't pay bills. I mean, their life is completely different. And then when I was overseas in the late 80s, early 90s, I actually had a program for dependent wives. And so we did exercise together and, you know, kind of a welcome wagon because they don't have family. We didn't. I was a dependent wife. You don't have family over there. So just much like the soldiers are family, the wives needed to be family. So getting together and and working on their wellness. And then coming back and getting back into the medical field, I was an office manager for endocrinology and infectious disease and internal medicine to figure out that world. And then I was in, um, I worked for an insurance company where we had HMO, Medicaid and private pay insurance so I could figure out that world. So Uh the the main thing I want to say is whether you're diabetic and insulin dependent, whether you have anorexia, or you're 200 pounds overweight, or you have five kids, and even unemployed or homeless, we we have a responsibility to take care of the vessel we were given. Regardless of your spirituality, whatever it is, we were given this vessel to take care of, and we have to figure out what works for you. And it takes a lot of time and effort, because we could be fixing 10, 20, 30, 40 years of bad habits. We, have, we embed habits really well. They're just not always healthy. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I can see where, you know, doing something for 12 weeks, you might be great at following it for 12 weeks. And then pretty soon it's, you know, 20 weeks and you're doing half of it. You know, if you're that good at it, <laughs> you're even right. go that far. Yeah. That's right. Difficult. Are there well, any, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just wondered, I'll finish what you're going to say, but are there any things, you know, stories that have really stood out to you? That made an I, impact. I would say it's the stories where I catch my clients fibbing that still to this second crack me up because I've been doing it so long. I know. And even though it's not, you know, what I do is not a weight loss program. I do not design it or say it's even that way. But if you embed healthy habits, it happens. Even if you need to gain weight or lose weight or even maintain, if we embed healthy habits that work for you, the results are what we need them to be. And so what's, I collect their weight weekly. I collect measurements. I collect baseline strength, you know, activities. They have to count with their push-ups and squats are all in the beginning when we work out and periodically, because if someone isn't losing weight, they might've lost six inches in their waist. So I need to keep them excited and going. So I, I do collect data, but the funniest stories are the fibbers. So if their measurements never change, and remember I coach virtually, I'm, I, I don't see them and touch them, you know, physically. I see this. Sometimes they'll end up like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, we got a problem. A couple pounds here. <laughs> but I'll make them go step on the scale and weigh themselves too. I've had them take their phone <laughs> right there and go, because, you know, they've got friends. And I, I mean, I am here for tough love and to help them get results. Not judgment, not shame, but results. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, if the weight stays the same, measurements stay the same, emotions stay the same and you still say you're not opening the mail and you're not planning your foods, something's going on and then it'll come out. Well, you know, I still put, you know, really high calorie creamer in my coffee. And I mean, I do still eat like six or seven Hershey kisses at night, you know, and then the the whole truth starts coming out. And I'm like, we got to get, you know, real on this. So the fibbing still cracks me up. Mm. (laughs) I love that you do it virtually, though, so you can connect with people all over. And I'm yeah, sure I got to see the face. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I can you tell by looking at them if they're telling the truth sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, and for me, what I love, what keeps me going, my passion is when I call it my ahas. When a client really looks forward and I see the whites of their eyes and they're like, oh, I get it. Uh-huh. And it. It could be a year later. It could be, you know, three days later that they understand a tool or a strategy and they go, I just got it. So I, I crave this as much as they need it. This is my drug is to be helping people and be in front of people. So I just love it. Yeah. Well, you're really making a difference. And it's just, I just love how you're doing it. I love your approach and how you're reaching out to different ages and groups and communities and corporations. And, and it's funny when you talked about your past and how this all came together and you had all these various jobs, it was like, you, you could just see them, um, oh, she's getting this piece of it and this piece. And her guides are probably bringing in this for her. And um, they were just like putting all those puzzle pieces together to have this perfect program, this perfect development of you to carry it forward. I actually have, now that when you're older, you can see that stuff. And just as I was going along, it was never a question. I never questioned it. I was just like, I knew what I was doing and just took whatever it was, no matter how hard Um, how many steps I felt pushed back from anything. I fought a lot of policies and procedures in my day on trying to do things that I wanted to do and put employees first. That wasn't a big, huge supported gig. And honestly, my, the budget cuts, my position was always the first to go. I mean, corporate wellness coordinator, first thing they do is take benefits away from employees. And it was, it just broke my heart. Oh yeah. After building all those relationships and you've got something building to have to pull away and Mm -hmm. hope that, you know, they all still come to you privately perhaps or whatever, but now it's not part of the corporate umbrella. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm -hmm. ouch. Yeah. It's it's tough, tough environment. And you know, there's a conflict of interest. So when I gave up who I was individually as a coach, I dive into the corporate world. You don't get personal clients. You don't work with them one-on-one. It's a conflict of interest. So that's why I really walked away three years ago and said, I have to do this on my own. I I feel in my heart what's right and I need to make a difference and stop fighting, you know, policies and procedures. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Well, we're so glad that you did. <laughs> and all the people, all your clients out there, it's like, woohoo, this is exactly where she's supposed to be at this time. But we have about, oh, maybe a minute or so, and we have to take a break. So I'm going to ask everybody to just hold on. We have um, one last segment. We're going to wrap some things up, share some more stories. And um, if you haven't called in, you're thinking about it, please do so. That number is 1-800-930-2819, and you'll get a free 30-minute consult with Peggy. So take advantage of it. And we'll be back in just a few minutes (laughs) with Animal Soul Wisdom with Peggy Wilms. Thank you. Tune in to the Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with Fernando Albert. And get ready to tour the astral realm, expand your life in ways you've never imagined, and call in for the journey of your life with this world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, and healer, Fernando Albert. This is every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Do you want the knowledge and wisdom to understand where spirituality, science, and psychology intersect? Then join the Karmic Path Radio Show with Tina and Laura on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. Follow this charmingly, disarmingly dynamic duo as they explore how psychic ability, spirituality, and karmic law tie together. For more information on Tina, Laura, and their groundbreaking work, visit thekarmicpath.com. Are you ready for unfiltered gratitude, unfiltered frequency, and unfiltered creation? Then don't miss Mike Murphy Unfiltered on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursday from 12 to 2 Pacific Time as Mike Murphy and a cast of powerful guests discuss and demonstrate the principles and practices of the creation frequency. Tune in to unleash the power of your mind. Open the immense energy of the heart to manifest an awesome life filled with true health, wealth, confidence, gratitude, and joy. 
unfiltered truth and unfiltered frequency to uncover and let go of limiting beliefs and access your powerful intentions that resonate out into the universe with Mike Murphy Unfiltered. For more information on Mike and his work, visit his website at MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Hey everyone, it's Darcy Parisa with Animal Soul Wisdom and my guest today is Peggy Wilms and we are talking about everything life coaching and transforming your life and this is um, not a cookie cutter approach, this is fun and um, accountability but it's, I don't know, when you talk to Peggy you'll get so inspired and you want to do it and she transcends all boundaries, she looks at all areas of your life. So she's been sharing stories. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to the whole program, please go back because you don't want to miss this. And But I also want to mention too that Peggy's on um, her own show on Transformation Talk Radio. It's every Monday at 3 Pacific and 6 Eastern. And it's got this adorable name. I just love it. It's Coach, Couch, and Coffee. <laughs> so check that out. But we were talking during the break and I want to go back into that because... Sure. Um, jump in wherever you want to start about how we all need help and things you see and fantastic. Sure. <laughs> oh, that, well, you know, I'm never shy for needing for the ability to talk. So that makes sense. I have a talk show, doesn't it? So to think, to go back to the name of my show, because this is kind of a funny story in and of itself, why I named it Coach Couch and Coffee. So I love coffee. Talk about habits, right? They go back when we're young and I work with clients to say, what are the history? What do your parents do? Because it's come forward. Coffee has been a part of my life since I can remember. I'm from New Hampshire, northern, northern New Hampshire. I can tell you we had coffee, ice cream, ice, coffee, coffee at night, coffee when my parents, you know, my dad come home from the paper mill or my uncle, coffee pot was on. It was, it just was part of my life. I'm still that way. I've got it everywhere. And so when I thought of coach, you know, what was I going was I going to name it? I thought I wanted kind of that couch thing where I could, you know, just relax and get to know people and and open up a conversation based off the real world, which is what I feel like. So coach couch and coffee is kind of my gig. And um, if you go on my website at threewellnesspillars.com, it's full of unicorns and rainbows and kind of a funny little world, but it's I choose to live, you know, to believe that all things are possible and magic happens and law of attraction. And so I'm a unicorn girl. (laughs) (laughs) And I love that too. And I love your coffee cup. (laughs) I have like 20 of them. Yeah. Yeah. What I was thinking, I was kind of saying to Darcy during the break is, you know, when you become, so I'm a health wellness and life coach and the way it's easiest to break down, because quite frankly, everybody's trying to be a health wellness and life coach. You see a million of them everywhere. It's the newest gig to be lots of, you know, courses out there, thousands and thousands of dollars. But the best way I can explain to to break it down is health to me is the medical kind of side of it. You know, if you think about diabetes or cholesterol or blood pressure, kind of worrying about the health side. The wellness side to me is the full wellness wheel that, you know, the relationships and the nutrition all falls, you know, kind of in everywhere. But then the life coach of it part is so vital because that's everything. That's whether, again, it's spirituality or a painter. I mean, I had somebody I was working with a while back who hadn't painted in like 15 years. So really what I want to say is that there were subjects along my path in my career that we could not discuss. 
it was chapter one ethics. You do not discuss race, eth- you know, ethnic, sexuality, religion, case closed. So I've been, this is what, 30 years. So as we've moved along, those doors have obviously opened up. We're all human beings. And so what I was saying to Darcy during the break is that I feel we all have a major responsibility to take the best care we can of the vessel we have. So I always say, whatever your religion is, your higher power, whatever your belief is, we still know we are human beings with bones that walk the planet, that have a responsibility, whether you're a parent or a medium or a coach or a teacher, to do the best you can to take care of yourself. And I just, I believe that's, you know, eating well, moving more and accountability, motivation around the whole aspects of your life. So we all need to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll just ping a little dog thing in here. (laughs) Yes, please. Um, You know, we miss things. Sometimes our animals have physical issues and we don't understand what's behind that. Um, This is just a real quick story of a family took their dog to the veterinarian because he was pretty sick, found out that he had heart disease and had to be on this specific medication. So what came up in that this particular story was that um, this dog used to run with his man. He ran all the time. He was a picture of hell. And these two ran. They were, you know, everything hell. They ate perfectly. And well, when the man had to move away and he couldn't take the dog with him, he asked his brother and family if he could stay with them because he knew them and adored them. And sure. So they're at back of the vets and the veterinarian says, okay, here's the medication. Here's what you can expect. And the family stops him and they say, um, no, no, you don't need to tell us because we're all on that same heart medication also. All six family members were on the same heart medication. I mean, talk about this dog with his big heart saying, I want to help you. What can I do? And they'll take on not just our emotions, but I'm sure the emotions were going with that physical aspect. So here it was, you know, that had to really be life changing for them to be able to see themselves in that way. Well, and I always find it interesting that, you know, our animals tend to look like us, right? So it's like the the adults in the family are a little overweight, and then they're so shocked the poodle is as well. And it's a perfect example of how our habits just, they, they bleed into everything. They bleed into our coworkers and vice versa. And they, um, you know, if you'd stop feeding your dog the scraps, you shouldn't be eating. I mean, it's just interesting how habits in yeah. bed with everything. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. And so, you know, I tell people, I mean, I don't say it quite this way. It depends on the situation and how it flows through me. But when we do our work, just like you're talking about, when we take care of ourselves, I mean, that that has, you know, long reaching arms, not only to our animals, but to our children and maybe grandchildren or anyone else, roommates. But um, we do our work, we're freeing them, we're freeing our fur friends of of our Mm -hmm. destiny. Yeah, and I I believe in changing generations. I believe we have the ability to do it even in one generation, even in, you know, in a month. And um, I've seen it. I've seen it with families. I know we can do it. I know it's hard. I recognize that. But just as much as we can negatively affect generations, we can positively affect generations. Um, if our kids grow up eating healthy and even walking after dinner, that's all they know. And that's what they do. If it's, you know, the other way around where it's popcorn every night, it, that's all they know. And that's what they'll also be attracted to is a, a partner who tends to behave and do the same things. They don't often date, you know, a marathon runner. It, it's just, unfortunately, we do, um, you know, we do mirror our society and the relationships that we're in. It's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we can all look at our own lives and see, you know, stories and situations yeah. in that too. So there's so yeah. many things that you bring up that, if we can look at ourselves and look in the mirror and see how we're doing it, I mean, we know we're doing these things and maybe our grandparents did, but if we think about the impact it's having on our body and what we're right. carrying forward to those next generations and those animals in our house. Um, right. When I learned that my dogs were having some thyroid issues, I felt horrible because I went, oh, I, I had thyroid issues for a certain period of my life, but I went, that was so long ago. Could it be? Um you know, and I'm probably hypersensitive now, but yeah, it, it is. Now they do have our have our things. So, it yeah, Peggy, it's been so, so much wonderful. fun. It's been so wonderful to have you on. I'd love to have you back another time and share more stories and um, share you. your wisdom and 
And again, if anybody would like to call in, that number is 800-930-2819. You've got a few minutes yet before and you get a free 30-minute consultation with Peggy. Nice. So awesome. Yeah, I would I would jump on that if I were you. Can I, can I call? <laughs> I'm telling Peggy, I want to come to you. <laughs> we, might, we might barter. I love bartering, you know, where you just kind of not barter, but trade out. Yeah. Those are the good old days. I've got a sheep. You've got a cow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just send me a picture of your sheep and I'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. And Peggy, especially to you, you made the show. It was just great. Oh, um, please join us again. I'm on every Thursday. Um, the next one will be, what is it? The second Thursday of the month. And I'm not thinking of the date right now. I think it might be April 9th, but it's at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 Eastern. And Peggy, your next show is when? I am every Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Eastern. And Coach Couch and Coffee, you can find me also on 3wellnesspillars.com is my website. Sign up for newsletters. I've got blog, my programs. I've got an e-commerce store. Shop, have at it. Have fun. Yeah, you've got a fun fun website. Yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> so thank you again for being on. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we will see you next month in April. Thank you for listening to Animal Soul Wisdom Radio, tapping into the wisdom of our animals, angels, and masters with Darcy Pariso. Tune in monthly as Darcy shares stories and insights on how to better understand and deepen our relationships with animals. Working with light and ancient techniques, Darcy is here to guide you through the process and provide inspiration to move forward. For more information or to listen to this show, visit DarcyPariso.com.